from Tech for Techs. Today we're going to be looking at this Cooler Master, Master Liquid ML360. It's RGB and it's designed for the TR4. So this is for Fred Ripper only. We're going to be trying it on the new Fred Ripper third generation board uh, to see if it actually works, which it should, because the socket's the same as TR4. The new ones are called TR4. X4, um, so pretty much the same thing, um, but we're going to actually just see how it performs on there. Okay, let's have a quick look at this box. It says Cooler Master at the top, make it yours, which says normal slogan. At the other corner, it tells you about all the RGB, 16.7 million colours and all that, and all the different things it works on. Uh, you've got your uh, name down here, so it's the Master Liquid ML360 RGB TR4 Edition, all in one liquid cooler, exclusively designed for AMD Ryzen Threadripper. And then you've got the Fred Ripper logo down the bottom and it also says it includes an RGB controller which is good if you haven't got an RGB motherboard but generally every Fred Ripper motherboard I've seen or at least the new ones do come with a built-in RGB controller on the board but it's always nice to have the extra so let's have a look at the back Okay, on the box it tells you on the back the actual height or the depth or what you want to call it. So from basically where it connects to the motherboard to the front of it. Uh, it's 49mm the height including where your two tubes are going to go into. Uh, works out at 86mm. And then the... It doesn't tell you actually left to right and then it tells you all the way around it. It works out at 70mm which doesn't add up so I'm presuming that's supposed to be the width but who knows. Uh, then you've actually got the radiator size here so 27.2 millimeters thick uh, and then deep you're looking at roughly 119 millimeters and then the width of it works out at 394 millimeters in total and then obviously you've got the fans which work out at 105. Okay so let's have a look inside the box doesn't seem to be any sort of seal on here. Uh, one thing on this lip I didn't mention, you can see on here it tells you about uh, the, well shows you a picture of the base, tells you about the uh, complete illumination and then the dual dissipation as well. So let's open the box up, what have we got inside? Well that piece of foam was the first thing to come out which helps protect it. You've got one, two, three fans. The model number of the fans are Master Fan 120AB. You've got the manual, but it's got a manual for a 240, uh, 280 and a 360 TR4 versions. Warranty information. You've got the cooler itself, or should I say the radiator and the pump which obviously the pump includes a CPU block. Then you've got all your different cabling, what comes with it. Okay, so you've got the three fans here, and they're all exactly the same type, so it's pretty straightforward. They've all got RGB and four pin motherboard connection. It also comes with a splitter cable there to connect all three fans together to put on one header on the motherboard. The Water block itself has got an RGB connection on there, as well as a 3-pin motherboard connector. You've also got the RGB controller, as well as the power cable for the RGB controller, which is a Molex connection. I wish they'd do SATA at least these days, uh, but you've got that there. You've also got your RGB splitter as well. You've got your master gel, which is thermal compound. You've got some interconnectors for the RGB and you've also got all the screws to attach the fans. The fans will basically attach like that and on the bottom of the water cooler you can see the pad there. It gives you a warning saying make sure you peel it off which yeah it would be a good idea and that pad does cover pretty much the whole of the Threadripper CPU which is better than some of the coolers I've seen in the past where it's only a little bit or 
covers about two thirds of the actual Threadripper CPU. Uh, and then you've got your four mounting um, screws there which are set exactly as they need to be for the Threadripper. So really to mount it on the motherboard all you've got to do is put your paste on, screw it in, obviously connect up all your fans in whichever position you want, push, pull, whatever configuration, uh, connect up your cables for the fans, connect up the RGB if you so wish, and away you go. Okay, so building the water cooler was pretty simple as you can see here. It's basically four screws which basically go through each of the fans, then screw into the reservoir itself. Very easy to do. You can do most of it with your thumbs and then just use a screwdriver to finish it off. No problems there at all. One thing that is a little messy is the actual cable and unlike some water coolers like the Arctic Freezer 2 where the actual um, cabling all goes through the pipe where this is you've got basically RGB cables, fan cables absolutely everywhere but when it comes to actually screwing it into the motherboard you don't need any special brackets or anything like that it screws directly into the CPU plate on the motherboard so it's very simple and easy to so down to test, and here you can see the idle temperatures when we tested on a Fred Ripper in at stock temperatures, and the temp average was over 30 minutes idle. On the next test, you'll see doing basically the same test again, but under 100% load. And here you can see the Cooler Master ML360 performs very well, and we're able to even overclock it up to 4.15 gigahertz, running at 72 degrees. Don't get me wrong, the other coolers like the Arctic um, performed very well considering it's an air cooler, performed a lot better than the Wraith Ripper from Cooler Master, uh, but uh, a clear winner here for the water coolers. But again, you're looking at something which is a lot higher priced. So I would highly recommend, if you're looking for an air cooler, the Arctic cooler, um, but in comparison, the Cooler Master water cooler does outperform it drastically in pretty much every test. Overall, I would recommend this water cooler any day of the week. It beats the competition's hands down, performance, temperatures and so forth. Only thing is, it will cost you a little bit more. But then again, when you're spending so much money on a Threadripper CPU and motherboard and then the memory to go with it, then you would probably um, spend a little bit more on the water cooler. And I would advise it, especially if you're looking to overclock, because we're able to overclock in even some instances up to 4.3 gigahertz uh, without any problems. Okay, run a little bit hot, but the other air coolers couldn't get anywhere near it. And most of the time they could only get up to around about 4 gigahertz, um, where the water cooler managed to get up to 4.15 with ease and with a bit of tweaking we managed to get it up to 4.3 gigahertz running at a voltage of 1.325. The advantages of the water cooler as well over the top of the air coolers as well as there was no limitations with the memory you can actually put in there. With the air coolers um, you do have a limited amount of room because they sort of overlap the sockets so we were only able to test the Arctic um, one for example with free 200 megahertz memory because any memory what we could find what was a higher spec than that would not physically fit underneath the cooler